Hey, Miles Beckler here, milesbeckler.com. This video is about Facebook split testing and more specifically about how to split test your ads on Facebook through the Power Editor. All right, so let's jump right back in. This is, um, I don't know, video four or five in a series of videos about the Power Editor and how to run Facebook advertisements and do paid Facebook advertising through the Power Editor. So here we are. If you missed the videos where we set up the campaign, the ad set, and the first ad, you can get access to those in the description of this video. So in order to set up your split test, we go to the ad level and you need to already have an advertisement. And if you don't see the editor with your ads, you just click the little checkbox and you get that pen on the right. You click the pen and it pops out and this is the editor area. We covered this in detail in the previous um, video, but what we're going to cover now is the split testing portion. Because once we get our first ad up, the first thing we want to do is run a quick split test and test some imagery. And the reason I start with imagery um, is because it's a simple and a quick split test. And also on kind of the overall size of your advertisement that displays on Facebook, the imagery is kind of the biggest portion. It's the most attention grabbing portion. Uh, so I'm going to test a bunch of images first. And then once I see which image out pulls the other, then I go in to test the copy. And we use the same kind of method that we're going to use here for split testing in Facebook ads. Um, instead of testing the imagery on one, you test the copy. And real quick, just to be sure we're uh, on the same page, we only test one thing at a time on an effective split test. And that's why I'm going to leave all the copy the exact same. And we're just going to go ahead and test the imagery itself. So we're here. We've got our ad that we want to split test set up. And I can just click duplicate. And what it does is it gives me the option to kind of use the existing or keep the same campaigns and how many duplicates we want. I'm going to go ahead and set up four duplicates and I'm going to create those right now. So what it does is it's actually going to duplicate that out four times over and you'll notice that it has the new ones checked. Now this is kind of funky in here is you can go and actually change and update a segment or a piece of an ad across all of these at the same time. So since there's four of them checked, if I go in here and I change something, it would actually change it on all four. And I don't really want to do that yet. So I uncheck these first and foremost. And then I'm gonna slide this out so I can see what's going on here. And you notice we've got confused girl is the name of the image. And then you can see these are all the copies. So this is my one I started with. And I'm just going to go up from the bottom and I click that to highlight it. And I click this little imagery here, the little edit icon, and it pulls this out. So what I want to do is I'm going to go down here to the image and I'm going to click change image. And I want to go to stock images. And then it brings up this powered by Shutterstock, the same place we got the other one. And I'm going to do frustrated woman. And I'm doing this because I want to show that that feeling, if you will, of kind of sort of discontent, um, the the problem that we're we're actively helping solve. And I'll use that one for this ad. And there it goes. I've updated my ad. So now what I need to do is go up to the top and I need to change my name so I can easily see this. So this will be head down computer. Click that there and then I'm going to move this in and that's it. So you can see it updated that here. I'm going to uncheck it. I'm going to go on to the next and this one I'm going to go down and same thing. Again, we only want to manipulate or we want to test one thing at a time. So we go over to stock images and I'm going to type in here um, frustrated man. We'll test the, the male imagery versus the female imagery. And um, let's see here. I want one without a computer, one with a computer. I think the with the computer is going to be easier. This dude looks like he's having a rough day. Let's go with that one. So we'll go frustrated. Cool. And so I follow the same basic naming convention. This is going to allow me to see them all uh, relatively easily once I get some data running through, which would show up in these areas. 
and real quick here I want to change I want to get the copy out of there because I didn't you can also click this little edit bar and it'll allow you to edit the title really effectively it doesn't pull out that whole slider which is kind of nice um, then we're gonna go to this one and we're gonna get let's get a confused guy and this is it really um, there's not that much involved. It is kind of um, requires you to think a little bit about what kind of imagery is actually going to trigger your target market, right? Who is your target market? What what are they used to seeing on their timeline? What's going to kind of fit in and get them to stop? Because they're scrolling really, really quickly through their timeline to kind of look at the pictures. And you need to make sure yours is coming up as something that, that captures their attention for long enough to get them inside of your copy so they can get to your hook and they can kind of actually read about what you're going with. And my ad and this campaign is all based on personal development. Um, so let's do uh, happy family. Let me go and change image and we'll do another stock image and we'll do happy family. So there's kind of two approaches you can go in marketing, right? One approach in marketing, is, it's called the carrot or the stick. What is going to motivate uh, your target market? Is it the, the fear of getting whipped by the stick or is it the carrot that we're dangling in front of them, getting them to move towards? Generally speaking, the stick is more effective than the carrot. But um, we do want to test that because every market is different and showing those positive images of the life that they want to ultimately live uh, is a great way to potentially um, inspire them versus marketing to them through fear. So this is um, Sunset Family or Family Sunset. And take off the copy. And so here we are. We've got that all set up. We've got the split test done. I'm going to do one more duplicate here, and I'm going to do another happy family since we've got two of each of the other ones to give the same possibility of the rotation numbers. And we're going to keep the same campaign. We're going to create that. It is going to automatically check the new one. You can see it's got the copy there. Um, so this is the new one. The other one's unchecked. You always want to make sure you only have one thing checked over here so we're not accidentally manipulating multiple um, advertisements at the same time. I'm going to click change image, stock images, and we're going to do another happy family. And let's do this one right here in the, on the nature hike, I guess. Um, and that's it. So now I've created, I mean, it took what, maybe uh, seven minutes, five, seven minutes with me even going through the process of explaining. Now we have not only that one ad that we got kind of completed in the last um video but we now have two three four five six total like seven different ads that are all going to run six different ads that are all going to run excuse me and facebook will rotate which one it's displaying all based on the daily ad budget we have here at our ad set level now facebook's not going to display these evenly sometimes they don't display at all for some reason and it's not that big of a deal but what i'm giving is i'm giving facebook a queue of different advertisements to publish to run and facebook wants to show the ads that gets the most engagement right because facebook's after having a really good user experience and what's a good user experience it's when they they like they comment and they engage positively with the advertisements and with the posts in facebook so facebook's going to display the ones it thinks has the best and what we do is i wait to see uh, at least a hundred clicks through one of these i like to see generally speaking um three to five 500 clicks before I consider making a decision. I'm really looking for a click-through rate, a CTR of about 3% is really exciting to me. Anything 2% and over is pretty good. Anything 4% and up is excellent. I rarely turn off ads that are getting 2% click-through or above. Um, anything in the 0.5 or the 1, 1.5 range, I, I work to improve them.
So we just click this review changes here and it uploads all of these new images, um, new advertisements in Facebook in our power editor. It uploads those up to our um, ad account. It starts displaying them. It tracks all of the data for us so we can see which ones are working. And once we have 500 click throughs on one of these, we're able to come in and make some decisions. We can turn off the ones that are not working. And once we've done that, we want to go in and create a new split test and the split test we We'll work on the next time is the top text. So we begin by testing the imagery and then we begin the second test. Once we know what imagery works best, we want to test this top text here and we want to see if we can get this text to be more compelling to get people to engage. Then we set up three to five split tests for the top text. We run that until we get enough clicks to have a statistic kind of reliability on our data. And then we test the lower text. And then this headline is the last thing that we text test, which is the call to action. You can definitely test this. You can test the button as well. But those are getting kind of smaller and smaller in the potential results that they offer. And again, it's really important for you to remember, um, just split test one thing at a time. You want to split test just the image, keep all of the copy the exact same. Once you get your images dialed, you want to split test the copy and you only want to split test the top copy. You don't want to change copy on top and bottom at the same time because when you see a bump or a decrease in your click through rate or in whatever that conversion is on that segment of your funnel, you don't know what caused that, right? So if I redid a totally different image, a totally different headline and a totally different top text, I wouldn't necessarily know if I got a better response, why I got that better response. And that's why we focus on one thing in our Facebook ads to split test at a time, get that split test run again, at least 500 clicks. If you could see a thousand clicks, you have really, really reliable data um, that has a, a strong statistical likelihood of, of holding up over tens and hundreds of thousands of clicks, which is ultimately what you want to get your campaigns to do when they're firing full on. And that's it. It's really simple to set up your split tests in Facebook. These Facebook split tests can revolutionize your business because it helps you identify the words, the phrases, and the imagery that gets your target market to take action. And then when you find a headline that works wonders, when you find imagery that works wonders, you can begin to take that and put it into your opt-in page. You can put it into your sales page, you can move these headlines down into deeper segments of your funnel because you know they have a high likelihood of getting your target market to take action. And it also creates consistency through your funnel, which is really important. They seem the same offer, the same giveaway, the same headline on each step in the funnel. And it makes them think, wow, I'm in the right place. Nothing changes. I don't feel like there's been a bait and switch. They feel like they're going down a logical process or logical procession of ideas. And that increases the likelihood of of them ultimately converting to leads and converting to customers. So all in all, it's really simple to run your split tests. Be sure you're doing it with a high probability of statistical reliability, which means let them run for two weeks and a thousand clicks. You're going to make sure that the data is true, that you're making your decisions on, and just always be running a split test. When you're running advertisements in Facebook, it's totally an investment. And to get the most out of your investment, you need to be split testing because then you don't just get the clicks and the leads and the customers, you get the information, the insights, and the words that trigger them to take action. And once you know what those are, everything down further and further in your funnel converts better. And that's the ultimate goal. So thank you for watching this video on Facebook split testing. I do appreciate it. Uh, go ahead and give me a thumbs up here in uh, YouTube. If you like the video, leave me a comment if you have any questions. And finally, be sure to subscribe so you can get the next videos as they are released because I'm happy to keep teaching more about how to build your business online through marketing funnels and Facebook pay-per-click. Enjoy yourself. I'm Miles Beckler.